No more notices. Let's get into the Word of God. If you've got your Bibles, then I'd like you to turn with me to Matthew 24. Matthew 24, verse 42. Okay. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what time of the night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his home be broken into. So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Who then is the faithful and wise servant, whom the master has put in charge of the servants in his household, to give them their food at the proper time? It will be good for that servant whose master finds him doing so when he returns. I tell you the truth, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But suppose that servant is wicked and says to himself, my master is staying away a long time. And he then begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with drunkards. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour he is not aware of. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is not a sermon this morning about the end of the times. This is not about the rapture or anything like that. This is about what Mick said earlier. This is about being ready. This is about not falling asleep. This is about doing what you've been called to do while you're waiting for Jesus to return. Because he will return. While I was on holiday, and I love holidays, they're hot, they're crowded. And you get full of sand. I love holidays. Caravan beds are always comfortable. I love holidays. No, this one was okay because Marie and the girls were there with me. I still love holidays. And Marie and the girls really love to go to the beach. It's the one thing they know I really desperately dislike with a passion. I just can't take the heat. I don't like the sun blaring down on me. I feel like I'm in a wilderness. And then when you get to the beach, and it's, obvi it's obvious that everybody has just decided they've sniffed freedom after COVID, and they're going to head for anything sunny, anything sandy, anything hot, anything other than the Midlands and it was to me Ray. it was believe me you didn't feel my pain so we get onto Dawlish Sands Beach or we get in fact no we didn't even get there before the cold sweat started for me we we got onto like the pier so we could look down onto the beach and I could see all these bodies and I'm like oh dear me Jesus help me I, I wanted a miracle at that moment. You know that miracle where Jesus, where God parts the Red Sea? I wanted that on the sand. I wanted all the people parted and just let me have my space. But it didn't happen. Marie and the girls were, were walking down these steps, these hot concrete steps, full of sand, hurting my feet. Sun's beating down. I've got my hat on though. Got a new hat. You saw it? looking a bit suave but I get down onto the beach and Marie and the girls they look around as if where shall we where shall we put ourselves where shall we camp for the for the next few hours oh yes let's find the part that's so crowded by everybody I've got a person rubbing shoulders with me on the left and on the right and I've got this little square patch in front of me and it's like okay if I throw my bag in the place maybe I've got a I'm exaggerating a little bit. 
just just a little bit just a little bit this is how much i like holidays so we we kind of eke out our, our space for this next few hours you know i've done all i can i've been loud and brash and i've i've said jesus loves you to everybody around see if they'll part and go away but they didn't they stayed there because they know they couldn't get a spot anywhere else i tell you that beach was crowded it was horrible you could smell the sweat on people <laughs> but it's okay for marie and the girls because they weren't going to stay there with all the stuff that was my job they were running down to the sea which is yeah it opens up and it's great and there's space everywhere and they can just go and jump in the sea and enjoy themselves and i'm stuck next to a family with five children that are arguing over what color lollipop they want it's truth i'm telling you the truth i thought you know what i will do i'm gonna lie down here i'm gonna stake my claim nobody's moving me i will not be moved it was one of those moves i'm going to stake my claim i'm going to get my book out and i'm going to read about the great reset which is a book by jeremy riddle about resetting worship just a plug for jeremy riddle there so i'm lying there ready but of course i can't lie there and relax and enjoy my book that i'm i'm desperate to read or even get my bible out. no why because Marie and the girls have put us on the walkway. This is the place where everybody, it's the only path that people can make around everybody else's tents. People had tents on the beach, tents on the beach. They could make their way around and just kind of skip in front of my face as I'm reading my book, sand in my eyes every couple of seconds. I'm like, Jesus, this is not working for me. Throw my book down. I stood up and all of a sudden a helicopter comes over an, an army helicopter it was the biggest helicopter I have ever seen it was so loud and everybody stood up everybody on the beach stood up and it was so low you could almost touch it you could almost feel the, dra the, the downdraft from it it was so loud and this helicopter just went over the beach hovered really low and then went off a little bit more and got a little bit lower and went up and down the coast and around where the sea was and you could see all this happening and i just felt god open my eyes and all this week the only message i had brewing in my heart for this morning was this message it was a question are you like the people sitting on the beach sunning themselves are you nice and comfortable in your own little spot of sand on your beach towel sitting there looking up at the sun that god has created burning your skin enjoying your surroundings because you like that kind of thing are you that kind of a christian or are you because as i'm looking as i'm looking up at this this helicopter going over which is obviously patrolling the seashore to make sure that nobody is in is in danger make sure that nobody's struggling or else i'm sure that a whole host of soldiers would have jumped out of that airplane dived into the sea saved them brought them back to the land as I'm looking up, I'm looking around as well, and I can see the lifeguard stations. And I can see the lifeguards. And they're all ready and they're attentive. Nothing like Baywatch, mind. British lifeguards aren't like Baywatch. <laughs> no. In fairness, no, we won't go there. I was going to, no. No. But I'm looking around and I can see the lifeguard stations. And I can see the lifeguards' surfboards already positioned ready to dive into the sea should anybody start to drown should anybody start to have problems in the sea they're in there they're alert they're ready they're like panthers poised ready to go or in in the uk a little bit more like a cat poised ready to go but i'm sat i'm stood there now because i'm not sitting down anymore i've lost my space everybody's taking my space no <laughs> 
no, everybody's starting to sit back down and I'm still stood there just like a plum looking up at this helicopter and looking around at these lifeguard stations and the lifeguards and then looking around at the people next to me, very close next to me, in front of me, behind me. I was, I was surrounded 360 degrees. <laughs> Uh, it was a traumatic experience. Jesus has done some deliverance and all sorts. But you see, I'm looking at the beach and I'm looking at all these people comfortable and their children playing in the sea and their children digging sand castles and throwing sand at me. And I just feel the question asked, is that my Christian walk? Is that our Christian walk? Are we the kind of Christians that are quite comfortable, quite happy to sit on our beach towels and look up into the sun? Or are we the Christians that are manning the helicopter, scouting out the coastline, ready to jump if somebody looks like they're drowning? Or are we the lifeguards, sat in our lifeguard towers, ready, watching, just looking through the binoculars at the sea. Are we ready, poised, ready to run and jump and do that? Some people stay in the sun. It's like movement. If you've watched Baywatch, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Are we that kind of a Christian? You see, the challenge that I felt God give me for today was that actually there's a few of us, if not all of us, who at times maybe even right now, are quite happy to roll out our beach towels, put on our sunglasses, put on our new dapper hats, pull up our trousers so that the sun can get to our legs, because we're from the Midlands, and lie there on the, on the stand and let the lifeguards do their thing, let the helicopter do their thing, and just get on with life because we're okay, Bob. If you move on to, to Matthew 25, you see that there's a parable of the ten talents. Most people would talk to you about that being about money. And that one, that one servant that's given one talent and he hides it and buries it in the sand. It is about finances, I'm, I'm sure about that. I'm sure it's about that, but it's about so much more as well. You see, God has given to each one of us, I said it earlier, we were not saved to sit on our seats. We were not saved to roll out our beach towels and lie in the sun and be happy. See, it's biblical why I don't like holidays. That's not what I'm saying. We were saved for a reason. And the reason is we are to man the lifeguard stations. We are to man the lifeguard stations surfboards we're to man the helicopter and watch over the coastline for those that are drowning so that we can jump in and save so that we can give them what they need to know Jesus and be saved you see the 10 talents is all about an expectation from the master for growth an expectation from the master for an increase he gave 10 talents to one of the servants. That servant went and invested it and did some stuff with it and came back with 10 more talents. And he was told, you good and faithful servant. That goes on a little bit. And then you get to that one servant who's been given one talent and he's hidden it. He's dug in the sand, put his talent in the sand, covered it over, put his beach towel on the top, lay back. The master comes back and says, what have you done? And he goes, master, I know you reap where you have not sowed. I know you expect to make money where you haven't invested. 
So I was a bit frightened, so I hid my talent and I've give you back the one that you gave me. And the master goes, you what? Paraphrasing a little bit, that's not in the Bible. He says, you what? You wicked servant. You've hidden what I've given you. You know I sow where I do not, where I reap where I do not sow. You know I expect an increase. You know I expect growth. You know I expect more back than what I've given. Because he expects you to do something with what he's given you. Are we the kind of Christians this morning that are quite happy to bury our talent under our beach towel? Or are we the kind of Christians that want to use everything that God's given us to man the lifeguard stations, to get in the helicopter and patrol the coast, to go after those that are drowning? Because there are many in this world drowning. All around us, amongst us, there are those drowning in seas of hurt, of pain, of brokenness, of addiction, financial ruin of debts, relationship breakups. And they don't know Jesus. The Bible says, freely you have received, now freely you give. We've talked about tithing and the principle there. You can't outgive God. You will never do enough to repay what Jesus did for you on the cross. And that isn't what Jesus is asking. He's simply asking, will you do what you need to do from the place of knowing I did what I needed to do? This morning, I am on one about getting the gospel out there. I'm excited by the two events that we've got planned. They might seem like small things to some of you, but to me, they're massive because they're doorways into relationships with people. And I know that where we go as Christians who have rolled up our beach towels, thrown them over our shoulders and a standing watch ready to jump into the sea, I know that with us, Jesus goes. Because Holy Spirit was deposited into each one of us. And he says, freely you have received, now freely you give. So these doorways, these events that we've got planned, as we build relationship with people, we take Holy Spirit with us into those relationships. And Jesus will make himself known in them. So I'm massively excited about it. I'm challenged by it also. Are we Christians that like to sit comfortably or lie comfortably on the sand with our beach towels rolled out? Or are we ready to jump into the sea to save those that need to be saved? I've played this video before and I'm going to play it again. I might cut it short because of time. But you see, I had an epiphany of a, of a sandy beach crowded with people. Reinhard had one about a luxury liner.
Roger, Rosemary. This is Coast Guard. All vessels in the vicinity of 44 degrees north and 127 degrees west report and prepare to render assistance immediately over. Coast Guard 1254. This is the Corpus Christi. We're in the immediate area. We're on course towards the Rosemary. EA is seven minutes. Over. Sir, we have a vessel in the immediate area. It's the Corpus Christi, sir. Uh, their bridge command just reported back, and they have a crew of 64 with 24 lifeboats ready to be deployed. Very well. Give them the coordinates and the manifest details of the Rosa Mary immediately. And I want a status report from the Corpus Christi in five minutes. Yes, sir. Seaman McMillan. Quite a night for your first tour of duty. Who are you? Choices, Jack. You, my friend, are about to enter the Valley of Decision. I'm sorry, mister, I have Let to... Let me ask you a question. What takes precedence? The vessel's facilities or its overall purpose? I believe the purpose of this vessel is quite clear, sir. Precisely. Our purpose should be quite clear. Jack, we are heading into dangerous territory. No way around that. However, inside this vessel is a comfortable place to be. And therein lies your choice. Will you go? Or are you also content to merely study about going? Sir, I do have to go. I have to serve the party. It's about to start. Jack, the party is almost over. Officer Burlow at the second level deck for an urgent rescue operation. Officer Burlow has prepared the lifeboats and we're ready to deploy. Everyone follow me. A rescue operation. Stanley, this man is dripping on my floor. My good man, Officer Brock. Let me assure you of one thing. There will be no rescue operation. But, 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 sir. Think. Do you know who takes their ship out in this kind of weather? Those who wish to remain unnoticed. So if some group of drug runners have run afoul, I will be the last to risk life and limb to save them. Devils, all of them. But, 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 but sir, this boat after all I is... I know perfectly well the purpose of this vessel. Do you wish to have us all killed? Uh, no, no, sir. The whole purpose of being inside such a boat as this is that it protects you from the outside. Is this not clear to you, Officer Brock? Well, maybe... Maybe perhaps not, sir. Sorry, sir. Seaman McMillan? Is that you I see joining the wise men? No, 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 what's this? It's only a handful of people. 
the from the starboard. The whole design for the new raft is based upon you pulling them up from the stern. If you want to be in 12-foot seas pulling somebody out from the stern, you can't even reach them. Trust me, I, I went over this thing for three weeks with Burlow. I've memorized the manual. I think you better catch up on some of your homework. Man, have you ever been on the new lifeboat? Aren't you glad you're not out in that weather tonight? I think it's time for church. Sir, you are correct. The Rosemary was en route from Vancouver and filed a manifest stating a crew of 12 and 64 passengers. Can you please report on the status of the operation? Sir, this is U.S. Coast Guard Captain James Meyer. You and your crew are under orders to deploy all available lifeboats and crew immediately. Do you comprehend the situation you are in? You are their only chance. They have the boat to beat all boats. 64 crew, 24 rescue boats, and they launch three In a nutshell, that's what our job is. That's why we were called. That's why we've been saved. That wasn't to guilt anybody into evangelism, by the way. You see, that's just a picture of what Jesus did for us. So why on earth would we not want to share Jesus with our friends and family and our neighbours that are drowning in the same sea? Let's just bow our heads for a moment and we'll end there. Father God, we've heard what you have said this morning throughout the worship time. And Father, we just want to present ourselves to you. 
empty us of everything, Lord, that is not you. Fill our hearts, Father, with the things that your heart is filled with. Give us a desire, a hunger, a love for the lost, Lord, like you have. And Father, I pray, give us a boldness like Jesus had to proclaim your truth, the truth. To share you with everyone we come about. Lord, let us not be Christians lying on our beach towels. But let us be those that are man in the lifeguard stations. Ready to jump when you say jump. Lord, give us ears to hear, eyes to see, hearts to understand what it is you want to say to us today. And Father, where we need to be shaken awake, shake us. Let those words be spoken over those who have fallen asleep. Wake up, O oh sleeper. And let us hear those words. Let them shake us. To grab hold of your mission, Lord. The Great Commission. To go and make disciples of the nations. Teaching them to obey you. To love you to know you Father I pray your blessing would go on everyone today that Lord you would continue to encounter us continue to speak to us continue to challenge us continue to encourage us continue to equip us Lord in Jesus mighty name Amen